to prepare for going to a place like a maximum security prison. I didn't know how to prepare. My preparation was um, just to have a few thoughts about what I was going to teach, but it was um, completely new territory. So the, the, the day that I was going to the place, my preparation was to stay calm. One thing that I knew to do was to not have a hierarchy. They are living in an extreme hierarchy place where they're at the very bottom. I even have a problem with being called Mr. Johns or in, as in Germany, Herr Johns. So I said, guys just call me Johnsy. And uh, it went from there. My name is Thorsten, I am a psychologist and I am working for a maximum security prison in Germany. I'm working uh, in prison since three years now and we are always thinking about how we can help prisoners to learn social skills, to learn empathetic skills. We got connected to Phil. We talked about which possibilities do exist to provide Qigong training or some other skills to, to help prisoners. I teach them Renyuan, which is the third method. Um, I decided to, it's the body-mind method. So I decided to teach this method because it's a little bit tough. It has um, positions that are a little bit physically challenging more than some of the other methods. Um, it has elements of uh, martial arts, Tai Chi. I felt like it would suit these men, yeah, these tough men in this prison. So I've been there nine months. I go every Wednesday. I make a point of turning up. I uh, don't want to break their trust. I can tell from them when they say, are you, are you coming next week? That been let down before. So also the momentum of, um, of, of weekly sessions is, is necessary for them to build up their knowledge and skills and um, so that the Qigong is effective. Practicing Yuan Qigong in, in prison helps the prisoners to, to learn to hear themselves, their heart, their mind, their body. Um, they, they are used to, to watch the situations, the people around, there, there might be danger everywhere it, it's it's really everyday life in prison danger could be everywhere um, and learning to hear your inner voice helps them to reduce stress to learn about themselves so no no more criminal activities in the future against other people because my inner voice is in fact saying something else. So the, some of the men, well all of the men have families, right? Some of, them, some of them have kids, like one has a son. When he first arrived in prison, his son was six years old, and now his son's just turned 15. Um, but he's in regular communication with his son, and now he has something to tell his son that he's doing this qigong, and this um, becomes something for, for um, it's, you know, that he has something to tell about prison life, this extra good thing that's happening, qigong, so that now his son is, is happy to hear that. They should have the feeling that qigong itself is helpful for them and is a way, a tool to um, become a more happy, a more, a more comfortable person and that can help them to, to do the next steps in life. But we want them to do Qigong only to learn for themselves.
It's important for, for the prisoners that they can rely in, in Qigong training in Phil. Um, they know he comes every week and um, it's, it's some kind of, um, of, of, uh, of worth that they don't know in, in, in their lives before. And um, the, the Qigong is, is on top but the trust is, is the base of, of the training. Every week, Phil is in the prison. When they all arrive, um, they, they have a social get together and they chat. And um, the, the chi field is, is good. It's full of um, joy and trust. You, it, you can't imagine it doesn't feel like a, a prison in that room.